We're moving now into the streets of London and we're bringing Juliana Olayinka from our London studios. Of course, it was a dismal day in the markets yesterday. The shares in the US and UK saw their biggest wonder decline since Black Monday in 1987. Of course, the Asian markets were uh, declined again today. Tell us how the London markets opened in the new trading day. Well, it's Friday the 13th, but um, it doesn't seem to be as bad as it was yesterday. There seemed to be a triple digit rise um, in the FTSE uh, 100 this morning. Uh, the last time I checked, uh, it opened at about 227 uh, points higher. Uh, there seemed to be some, even though Asia did open much lower, there seems to be some uh, reaction from the fact that China are now reporting less and less COVID-19 cases, uh, which appear to show that if indeed uh, countries do take in these quarantine um, zones, these social isolation, then perhaps the COVID-19 um, uh, could be uh, reduced. So yes, at the moment, um, so good. So far, so good, Bissy. The former Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt says that government's decision not to cancel public events over the coronavirus outbreak is concerning. But Boris Johnson says that it was crucial to get the timing right for stricter measures. When is the right time? Gosh, when's the right time? Um, I certainly can't answer that question. I think that's a question for um, health officials and scientific advisors. But you're right, Bissy. You know, there is definitely at the moment a little bit of pressure piling onto Prime Minister Boris Johnson because uh, the road that Britain is deciding to take is uh, vastly different um, than our neighbours. We did have um, a press conference and Boris Johnson yesterday was joined by his chief scientific advisor and the medical um, health practitioner of England and Wales. And within that um, discussion, he didn't announce that schools would be closing. Uh, what he did say, which I think is, you know, a, a quite a poignant, um, serious uh, a quote, is the fact that many um, people within the UK will lose a loved one um, untimely. Um, and even though at the moment there are only um, 570 confirmed cases of COVID-19, that up to 10,000 people in this country um, could already uh, be infected. But, you know, he is following um, the scientific advice. They believe um, that by containing it, by, you know, if you're showing symptoms of a cough or if you have a high fever and you stay at home for seven days and you self-isolate, then that could really delay um, the, the big impact, the peak of this virus. And they say within the UK, it's not expected to peak until about four or six weeks. We're about a month behind what we're seeing in Italy and they, they have over a thousand deaths. They say that's the right way to go. Now, Jeremy Hunt, he is the former health secretary. He thinks it's a ludicrous idea. There are many people um, that also uh, believe that. They think that schools should be closed in Britain as they will be in many other uh, countries. But the issue we have here, Bissy, is that the NHS is one of the biggest employers of staff in the UK. And the NHS is already under a lot of pressure. If now we decide to school close, then sc close schools, then those children will, of course, have to be at home and parents will then have to stay at home and many staff won't be able to go into uh, work. So there's, there's, there's a lot of differing and uh, uh, diving here in the UK at the moment, but that's the decision Prime Minister Boris Johnson um, has made. But of course, that could change in the next uh, 24 hours. Well, of course, we'll wait to see if anything changes. But for now, the ECB is offering cheap loans to commercial banks, and that's to encourage them to lend to small businesses as a way to tackle the economic impact of the COVID-19 outbreak. How is that being perceived in the UK? Uh, to be honest with you, Bissy, it's not being perceived here. The reaction is pretty muted. Number one, because we're dealing with our own crisis. Number two is because we're not uh, within the Eurozone. I suppose some economists um, had commented um, that they expected the ECB to do more and follow possibly in the lines of what we saw with the Bank of England uh, by cutting interest rates um, on Tuesday and what's going on in America with the US Federal Reserve. But the ECB have cut interest rates previously and they've got their own issues to deal with. It 
Italy is one of the largest economies and they've essentially been shut down. And then, of course, they had the bombshell of um, uh, US President Donald Trump uh, cancelling all flights um, from Europe. So Christine Lagarde has a serious amount of uh, pressure on her hands at the moment and it will affect um, their economies. Uh, bringing it back um, into uh, Britain, a lot of people now have been focusing quite um, uh, harshly on Rishi Sunak's budget plans. There's 12 billion which has been set aside um, for the NHS and for uh, small to medium sized businesses and then an extra nine billion uh, to deal with sick pay and uh, grants. But, uh, and you know, he was, a lot of people were applauding him saying it was a great budget, great uh, first speech at the dispatch box. But economists have been looking closer and they actually don't think the government is doing enough and that within the next uh, three to four days, there will have to be some more stricter, faster uh, measures taken by Boris Johnson's government if uh, the service industry is to survive. And of course, the service industry contributes 80% uh, to Britain's GDP, Bessie. Many thanks, Juliana. We'll see you again at 1.30.